Hello everyone, and welcome back to yet another video in my How to Study Pro Games series. Our first game was somewhat simple. Uh, try to keep everything very, very basic, which can be a little bit difficult to do when you are dealing with professional games. But I didn't really receive any comments saying this game was too complicated, I couldn't follow along. So I guess we're going along on the right track. Uh, this game will be a little bit simpler, or not simpler, sorry. Uh, can't really get much simpler than the game we went over previously. But it will be another simple kind of game. Uh, it will also fit into the lecture series that we've been having up until now uh, that focuses largely on influence. So you can expect that. Um, I also want to go over one more thing before we get started here. Uh, I touched upon it briefly in the first video, uh, essentially what not to study. And I thought I would give an example of that really fast, uh, an example of how you can tell that maybe a game isn't quite uh, right for you to go over if you're looking for a more elementary or intermediate uh, professional game to go over. That kind of sounds weird. Yeah, if you're looking for an elementary professional game, you know, you might not want to do this. Uh, sounds weird, but yeah. Uh, so essentially, let's flip on over here really fast. Uh, this is a game that I rejected, and when I rejected it, I saved it because I figured, why not? This might uh, come in useful, and it is. Essentially, here's why I rejected it. If I scroll through this really fast, I see frameworks, sure, but notice the position of the stones. Do you see how they're like right next to each other throughout the large portion of this game, almost the entire thing? Uh, you can immediately tell the uh, stones are almost in contact with each other uh, constantly. This is a bit of a dog fighting game, and that's how you can tell. Everything is constantly being played right next to each other until the entire board is pretty much all taken up. It's one giant fight uh, from start to finish, more or less. So that is a game that I went ahead and rejected. And that's an example of a game that you yourself can reject if you're looking for more elementary or intermediate styled game. Uh, if, on the other hand, you have gone past that and you are looking to improve your fighting and you do want to see uh, games that are essentially like that, that just go from start to finish fighting, 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 then you now know what you're looking for. You're looking for games where they just don't leave each other alone. That will not be what I'm going over. Uh, interestingly enough, the game that I did just uh, briefly get you a glimpse of is one of Guling Yi's games, and the game that I'm going over now is played by the same player, which brings me to another point. Just because one game of a player's, it might be a little bit too difficult for you to go over, or might not be what you're looking for, it doesn't mean they don't have games which do fit what you're looking for. So uh, don't cut them out just because you see one game that you don't like. Alright, that said, let's see what happens in here. Um, who is who? Uh, Guling Yi in this game is white. Those of you who study pro games regularly, you might recognize this, uh, his name. Uh, can't quite make out the black player, only that he is a professional nine down. So it should be a pretty high caliber game. Which I guess is yet another point. Just because you're looking for an, inter an elementary or intermediate professional game doesn't mean you're looking for like 1P uh, or 2P games. You could be easily looking for 9P. And more often than not, I will say you're probably looking more towards 9P games. Alright, so we are opening up pretty standard, as one would expect from just about every single game that I ever go over. Nothing uh, too unusual. We have this wonderful little 3-4 stone facing an empty corner right now. What is white going to play there? We do not know, other than there are so many possibilities. He could decide that he wants to face his 3-4 stone to his other stone. That way, black can't 
approached easily for a kind of uh, micro Chinese. He could say, you know what, I don't mind. You can go ahead and do that. He can say, you know, I have something completely crazy and wild in mind. I'm going to have my stone face your stone, and we're going to get into a weird kind of game. So many possibilities early on. Just because they might not pick what you do doesn't make your move wrong. In this game, we do see the 3-4 facing, uh, facing White's other stone, making it, as I mentioned, more difficult to establish a framework on the bottom of the board. As such, Black decides he's going to go ahead and close instead. Go for a bit of a territorial game. Nothing wrong with that. We love ourselves an orthodox. And White decides... He's going to play the framework. Interesting. So now we're getting into a bit of an interesting kind of game. We've got one player saying, I want my territory. The other player says, I want my framework. Hard to tell how this is going to go. I mean, what could you do here? Um, as black, we might immediately look at the... Uh, framework that White's developing and say, okay, Chinese, I know how to handle this. I can approach on the outside and back off. I can be a little bit more calm and just make certain that you can't expand off your stone, which I know you want to do, because what you want me to do is to drop right in here, because that's what we know about the Chinese Fuseki, right? Anyone that doesn't know about the Chinese Fuseki, you can look it up online, you can look it up in one of my other videos. Uh, I have gone over this before. Essentially, this stone is placed because they want you to come back in here, because you're pressured. Therefore, we try and avoid doing that. We want to do anything and everything else but jumping back there. Um, however, we also have an enclosure. It's not just this variation, right? Where we're looking at our opponent making a framework and we're just going to respond to it. We have our own uh, stones in play. We've got an enclosure. So maybe we take uh, an extension from it. That could be a thing. That could be a really nice thing. So many, so many different options to do. Black admittedly plays a move that I have not seen before. Well, I've seen it before. I don't see it very often in professional play there. I typically see either uh, the extension high or low. This is a bit weird, and I in fact just leaned forward and double checked to make certain that I have the SGF tree in fact correct. I do. He is enclosing off a 4 4 stone. I have not messed that up. Go me. So, what do we know about this? What do we know about enclosures at all? We know that potentially. Black would like to get something like this from his enclosure, right? But he kind of also wants this for his enclosure on the bottom. So what might be he be thinking about? He might be thinking, let's see, if I was white, maybe I'd be tempted to expand over here. That way black can take an expansion up top. That might be a thing. Um, we might see white enclose to prevent black from getting this easily, because if we take it now after the enclosure, we can be pincered here, because this can't get a two-space extension, so that can be a problem. Uh, we could go for a bit more of a... a little bit more of a careful extension off of our framework. This is just saying that I don't want any sort of shenanigans happening to my stone, because I know it's kind of difficult to get a base back here. Hard to say. Very, very hard to say. Alright, so white doesn't close. Black's turn. We still have this framework that we can worry about. We can still approach it from the traditional methods. We can approach it from the outside, either one or two space. 
high or low. Beware if you do low, though. It does open your opponent to lean on you and continue expanding the area. Anytime you do see a low stone, what's going to go through your opponent's head is we can keep that stone low. So does that work for us at all? And if it does, it might happen. Um, could still theoretically play on the right hand or on this side of the board, but the minute we do, we're we're almost cringing the minute we play it. I mean, really, we're gonna expand from a low stone here. I mean, it works with our corner, but doesn't really work with our enclosure now. So, I mean, even this seems too close together. So, what do we do? Do we put it here? Now it kind of seems in a weird position with our uh our three four enclosure so i'm not liking that one very much not liking that one much at all mm, okay so we do in fact see an, uh, an extension here and an approach onto the framework in a rather traditional method prompts white to enclose and immediately black can feel a sense of victory here whenever you force your opponent to do this when he's playing the Chinese. Because when it's still open like this, there's a giant question mark on the board that I would love to do with a marking tool, but I can't. Uh, suffice to say, there's a giant question mark here. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, am I going to, in the end, be forced to approach this and just jump into the pincer? We don't want to do that. Um, do I have to reduce this somehow? Am I going to Am I going to shoulder hit? Is that what I'm going to have to do? Am I going to have to maybe cap the low stone? Maybe that's something that I have to do? But the minute this exchange takes place, our questions are so answered. Just immediately. This is no longer the Chinese. It's an enclosure with an extension. You can look that up online how to reduce it. You can look it up in books. You can probably randomly hop into a game being played on whatever server you happen to play on. You might find it uh, being dealt with there. It's something that we've probably seen before. So we're a bit more comfortable handling it. It does give white a lot of territory though. But it's known territory that we know how to reduce. Or a giant question mark that we're not really sure what we're going to do about. So, this is nice and sure. That's what we know about that. And black gets to extend. Happy, happy days. Uh, let's see. Someone in my chat is actually asking me if I have a YouTube channel where I give tips about Go unusual that someone actually stops by uh, my YouTube channel or my uh, Twitch channel without knowing about my YouTube channel. So I'm going to link that real quick. Sorry about that. Anyway. Um... We get the extension here, which is really, really nice for us. Now we can go about and figure out what we want to do. What do we want to do here is white. We've got an enclosure, we've got an extension, got an extension from our 3-4 uh, enclosure, we have an extension from our 4-4 enclosure. So one thing that we immediately think of is a double wing might be playable. But that gives Sente over to black. And if we take our double wing, then maybe he'll get over the whole not liking the relationship here bit and take his double wing as well. So that could be an issue. That could be an issue. We could go into reduction. We can uh, potentially attach in order to get stronger to live on the, uh, this side. We could look for a stone to play in the middle. I guess it would be here. 
This way we can take two space either direction. That could be a, uh, something that we could do. It would allow white or would allow black to kind of push us around though. Give us a bit of a weak group. That might be uncomfortable. What do we decide to do? Ah, okay. So we are taking that, and we're taking it off uh, star point, you'll notice as well. It's getting as much as he can while remaining safe. Because this, a little bit too passive. This, not bad, not bad. Does kind of encourage white or black to uh, force us to defend. This, mm, still kind of hard to jump back in here. There's no room for any kind of base. Anything more, though, and now there's no room for us to get a base either. But there is kind of a room for him to get a base. So we don't really like that. This is about as far as we can possibly get while not being crazy. Okay. Black does take his stone and again it's off center as well because that just doesn't feel very right with these two stones together likely one of the reasons why he played this is because he had the idea that he was going to make an extension and he already knew where the extension was going to take place and this is an interesting placement it makes it a little bit more difficult to come in here because we know that we can't make any kind of base here Unless we potentially, I don't know, attach to uh, the corner, try to get stronger. Same thing on this side. Very difficult. Um, anything else that white can do? Well, I guess white could do a large move like this, right? Note, I did not say Tengen, because Tengen is evil, and we do not say it in my presence. Uh, truthfully, though, uh, it might look nice to expand from it, but... I mean, you can picture, and it's going to look really, really weird, but I don't have a labeling tool. But you can picture that we have essentially any one of these moves that we could essentially use to reduce still. So we know we're not getting this far. And if we start getting shoulder hit and capped and uh, a bunch of force moves played against us, this is actually going to get cut off and forced to live. That, that would be embarrassing. Usually Tengen is not as powerful a move as we might wish it was. Anything else that we can do? We can go into reduction mode. Try an invasion. Cat. I think the cat would be the most common that you would find, especially in uh, books. You definitely find uh, the cap on to this nice reduction point. Mm, okay. White decides to continue expanding. Make us top nice and strong, maybe force a response from black. Black immediately is not going to do it, we all know it. I mean, if we actually respond here, then I guess he gets to get in a move like this as well, or go in and reduce you. We don't want that, right? Why would we be doing that? Just so he can't play a move like this? Is that what we're worried about? Or take our corner away in Gote? We're not worried about that. Not worried about that at all. Um, alternatively, we could potentially have black trying to take an area, but that's that looks too small. That looks too small. We have to do something about white, and there's a lot that we can do still. We can do a traditional uh, reduction onto his uh, corner, because we all know, or should know, how to reduce um, enclosures around the 4-4 point, or based around the 4-4 point. Um, like I mentioned, we've got shoulder hits and caps available. These are a bit more interesting to us, though, because this tries to reduce him, but it also tries to expand our area at the same time. Those are nice. Those are always nice moves to look for. 
I mean, it's good for your eye to immediately follow on to fall upon this and say, okay, I've got options there. If I want to, I can reduce this. But it's also to look for also good to look for those dual purpose moves. Like I can re I can begin reducing him and expand myself at the same time. That's that's good. That's really good. <laughs> and he plays it. All right. We are expanding out. White's got two ways to respond. He can either defend this way, or he can defend this way. Playing low is a bit too passive. If we play high, then depending on what our opponent does, we're set for follow-ups, right? We could still potentially make this area nice and large. If we play low on either side, then where's our expansion? I guess we can do that, but that's not as severe. It's definitely not putting pressure on this one stone. Uh, we could go completely crazy and attack, but that just allows our opponent to follow up his move, to continue threatening us, you know, whatever he wants to do against that one stone. Alright, so white does uh, back off to the corner. That is where the majority of his framework still lies. That is where he can still build up from. Makes perfect sense. Definitely liking it. Depending on how aggressive black wants to be, what can we do here? We can say, I'm going to attach to you and make this area as large as possible. We've seen games like that in uh, some of the lectures that I go over, though, too, haven't we? And we know how well that went for him. But playable. I mean, if this is going to be Sentai, we can still potentially get back. But we have given up a lot of territory doing that. Ah, messing up my stones. There we go. Alright. Uh, what else can we do? We could play away, but why would we? I mean, what was the point of this move if we're just going to play away? Doesn't make much sense. Attaching's most common. Yep, attach. And then Hane. And then extend there? No, we're going to cut. Okay, now we're getting interesting. Now... The cut here can be difficult to understand. It can be very difficult to understand. So let's look at a few other things first. We could pull back and maybe then white just extends for a connection or maybe even, well, if we play the Hane, then there's going to be the cut anyway. Let's say it just extends for a connection. What value were those three stones. Not uh, not much yet, right? I mean, there's still a hindrance. We can't play away because next move we're falling under severe attack. So we haven't really gotten profit from them yet, despite the fact that we're giving white uh, profit on the right hand, on, on the uh, on the side of the board. So not not quite what we're looking for yet. Not quite what we're looking for yet. We can extend this way. Okay, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. White probably something like this. But our shape is still a bit of an issue. And we might still fall under attack. Either way, it looks like we're they're creating uh, this group here for the sole purpose of being a bullseye. That's probably not what we were leaning towards. We were hoping that we can expand off of here, right? That, that was the idea, the whole dual purpose thing. Not to paint a target on our chest and just wonder how many times we get shot. Not quite what we're looking for. Not quite what we're looking for at all. So then we come to the happy crosscut. Crosscut says, I'm looking to use Aji. Why do I want to use Aji? 
because I'm looking for a better result here. Now, it might result giving you locally a little bit better of a result, but I'm looking to build that up. That's why I'm capping you, dang it. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? White decides to Atari. Okay. This gives black options to Atari, which he immediately goes and does. He's getting forcing moves. It's exactly what he wants. I mean, we can't use this Aji if we don't have forcing moves, right? That makes sense. Okay, takes, takes, good, good, good. Um, where are we going to play next? Where do you think he's going to play next? Hmm, we're going to use those lightly, aren't we? Okay, I know. Here's what we're not, here's what we're probably not going to do. We're probably not going to connect. Because if we connect, then we've painted that bullseye on our chest again. Uh, that's not good. We do not want to do that. Not only have we painted a bullseye on our chest, but we've actually given him a weak point too. So it's like we painted the bullseye and then handed out ammunition. So we're not we're not looking for that. Now that's bad. We do not want to do that. Uh, it's a little bit better, but it's still not connected to anything. We can still be peeped all over the place. Still not quite what we're looking for. So what are we going to do? Play here or here, maybe? Yeah, okay, it is here. We're playing very, very lightly. We leave the cut points behind, like I said. Locally, there might be a little bit more for white. But we're looking for a bit of a reduction and that expansion. And that's what we're seeing here. Let's see, white could take this. He could say, okay, those stones are mine, but we already established that we're playing lightly. So if we do that, what is black gonna do? Just keep expanding? Probably, probably. He might not even, yeah, he might not even uh, respond to this. Or he might respond once, because this is all connected up strongly now. White gets to take the stone and then we play out? Or maybe we just freaking reduce him? Don't want that. Hmm, okay. White says, you're right, I can't respond there. And invades. Like I mentioned, influence game. And now we get to decide how well white is at reducing influence because this framework is certainly freaking huge so what are we going to do well we have a few basic options here um we've got this probably the first one that comes to mind for many of us we've got this looking for strong responses that limit Aji. Uh, some of you might want to play here, but we're going to attach to the stone that's trying to invade us? Uh, I don't know if that's such a hot idea. Oh, wow. Black is insane. All right. Black says, you know what? I like that you're trying to reduce me, but I've got your corner surrounded. So I'm going to strengthen my attack on your corner. Essentially, white can no longer go under for a base anymore. With this one move, white is completely confined to living in here. There's got to be two eyes back in here. So white says, yup, that is a good point. I need to do something about this. Um, this is un um, 
All right, that's odd. We're taking the stone and letting him surround us even more? Huh. Well, I will admit that wasn't my first thought. We get to connect now, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so we took... I see the value there. Alright, I guess we also got this stone in, which allows us to come out here later. So we kind of injured the surround that he has on us. But we better be able to live. We can't do anything here anymore. We have a forcing move there. Okay, it is a forcing move. And then from there, okay, yeah, if he actually connects, we can still, yeah, we can make shape enough there to live. Easy peasy. Alright, so we don't actually respond to that, right? Nope, we go back and answer the invasion. Alright. That makes a bit more sense now. Sweet. And again, we're not hitting this. We're not doing that either. Why does he not do that? Because, like I mentioned on this side of the board, when we cap, we do have the attachment still. So if we envision the attachment now, um, what are we going to do? Are we just going to push up? And cut for that one stone? That doesn't seem like too great of an idea. I mean, we're rapidly giving our opponent shape. We're definitely going to let him live here. Uh, our wall is kind of cut on the left. Not uh, that great, I guess. Um, especially if we just Hane. Because then we're going to see the cross cut again, yeah. Then if we take... He gets to do forcing, forcing again, like he did last time, and forcing, forcing again, like he did last time. And then... Shape move. Won't play here, won't play here. But we might play a little bit later. And then we're gonna be on nice and happy. And I don't think Black wants us to be happy. That, that would be bad. So, nice strong response. If white extends, most common move, uh, what's the most dangerous thing that white can do? He can uh, Hane here, but we can still cut that. It's not terrible. So if he does that, we get to play here instead because he can't Hane without being cut. Yeah, all right, that, that seems like it would be pretty horrible. So we can't play there. Oops. So instead, we usually see the attachment to this stone that is almost all by itself. Uh, let's see. Um, black responds nice and strong. As expected. We don't want to, of course, you know, risk pincering this, because then what are we going to do? Are we going to back off? You might look at this and say, yeah, we're totally doing this. But we've just created push and cuts and something like this is now a freaking uh, at risk of being like a ladder breaker on those stones if we're not careful. Too much Aji, too much Aji. Alright, so responded strong. Trying to get a base. 
bases are good. Black says we can't go under his stones anymore. That makes sense. So now we have to get out of here. Um, we're still behind enemy lines, so probably not time to go away. We could. We could say I'm going to reduce this now or something. But we still had an attack going on here. And as Dasan from the KJS Teaching Ladder always says, you do not want to go fishing when your house is on fire. This is definitely way too urgent to leave it alone. Yep. Black comes out. Uh, we're still behind enemy lines, so we're not going to go, Hey, look! <laughs> territory! Because then we're just going to be like, Hey, look, I'm dead. So that would be bad. That would, that would, that would make us uncomfortable. So, time to get out again. Uh, this is rather difficult. Um, we're still kind of behind the enemy lines, though. Yep, we're attacked. We are attacked. Oh, shoot. Uh, what can we do now? Hmm. Uh, let's see. What can we do? What can we do? Well, I suppose we have a few different options available to us. We could play away, because, you know, that's always a good idea, right? Uh, probably, probably not actually going to do that. Um, gotta respond somehow. Uh, living locally seems like it's a bad idea no matter how you read it. I mean, we can, but it's kind of small. Jumping out, he'll follow. I guess we have to, like, do a... What are we going to do? We're going to do a diagonal. Okay. That makes sense. Does it make sense? Ay ay ay. Can't that get poked at? Hmm... What do you do, Black? What do you do? Yes, we are. Alright. We are going to poke. Um. Ow. Because there's this, right? It's the small knight that can get brutally destroyed. So White goes back to live local? Okay. Responded. Black cuts through. Uh, now we really, really, really need to live locally, otherwise this game is over. Alright, getting our eye. Eyes are good. That's not. There we go. And our second eye. All right, so we're alive in Gote. Um, any way I look at it, I don't like that result for white. We're trying to invade and we got cut off and had to live locally. And part of our stones are still fracking behind enemy lines. And it's Black's turn, all right. Uh, who wants to guess what we're gonna do there? Are we gonna play away again? We can keep going back to this, but we're probably not going to do it, are we? Probably not. Whoops. My foot was in frame. Probably not going to do that. We're going to keep attacking, right? I mean, strengthen our stones. Because white can do something like uh, the push, or maybe even, nah, probably not that. But there's Aji there. So black comes out. 
strengthens himself. White says I can connect back on up, no probs. We can let him connect. We are not letting him connect. No connection for you. This is my area. Nom 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 nom. Hmm. What do you guys want to do now? A lot of people's games, I know immediately you'd be like, run away. And then Black would be like, LOL. Because the chances of actually getting this group to safety are so slim. Right? I mean, at this point, if you really wanted to try to make this run away, you could even go and invade to your heart's content because he can't let you out. If black gets out here, the only thing that white can possibly think of is I need to connect these stones up. We can't really try and counter that. If we get split, we're screwed. Um, and everything is an attack. Even a move like this would be an attack on that center group because we're behind enemy lines again. So while we're just connecting this up, he gets to come in and connect to safety really easily. So this group would ensure that Black gets to do whatever he wants. Alright, yeah, White isn't doing that. White ain't having it. White instead says, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to connect up my group or I'm going to expand my eyeballs out. That's what I'm doing. You get to choose which one it's going to be. Black says, I'm going to attack you because I like doing that. And your area is threatening to encase the fourth of the board, which is freaking enormous. All right. White plays the Hane and says, my fourth of the board, black cuts. Oh dear, that's unfortunate. That seems complicated. Important stones extend first. Don't give up stones. All right, that's fairly, uh, that, that's fairly something. Strengthens his stones. White connects. Now there's an interesting move. Connects up all of his groups to make him stronger. Reduces a ton of endgame in the corner now. Because that connection was fairly large. That connection immediately forces more moves in the corner. The end game just shrinks that to nothing. Now it's worth a few points. Now it's worth a few points. And if he connects and forces us to live, with this eye not being uh, a true eye, this group gets to lean on this or try to pincer it or something. And then this has to live by itself. So we have this living by itself, and then we have that living by itself. And we have this group living by itself. And this group in the middle trying to live by itself. Yeah, connecting that up is so freaking huge, isn't it? Huh. So simple of a move, too. I like that move a lot. That move's cool. It's not flashy either. It's not like one move that's threatening to kill the entire board. It's just one move that's, you know, taking care of troubles. Alright. So that move made sense. Sweet. Sente for black. Ouch. Ooh, double ouch. White is apparently still in trouble in the center. Black 
Black is a blood blood the black is a bit bloodthirsty. There we go. Got the sentence out eventually. Now there's an interesting thing. We could immediately play here. He doesn't, he plays this. So what's the difference between the two moves? If we play here, black gets to descend. And then what? Does he keep extending down? Might. Can we actually connect that up anymore? I don't know. Can you just play here now? Mm, maybe. Take all that for himself? That seems like a thing. Ah, shoot. The stones, they have minds of themselves. Of their own. Whatever. Boop. There we go. Alright, so he's looking to keep himself as secure as possible. <laughs> and I guess technically that was another me ruining the tree. Only on a real board it doesn't matter. Because a real board doesn't keep track. It doesn't laugh at you for all of its branches being destroyed. We love a real board. Alright, so what are we going to do here? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Connect up, obviously. Because if we play out, and he gets to actually go back and play this anyway, then what was the point of doing that in the first place? Yeah, connect that up. Gotta connect that up. Gotta, gotta do it. Uh, that means we're separated. That's an issue. Uh, I guess we can go this way to make shape. But then... I don't know. Then that's gonna be threatening to get cut. And the cut works. Cut works. So we have to respond. Maybe get peeped. Respond there as well. And then just get Sarat. That's disgusting. How about we don't play that? I'm not digging this variation. I'm not digging that variation at all. So what do we do instead? Ah, we're going to Atari. All right, I'm digging that one. I like that a lot more. This is a really, really cool thing to do. And if you get nothing else out of this game, I'm thinking this move right here might be enough to help you improve. Because immediately I thought of, all right, let's, can we like get out of here still? Can we attack that maybe and get shape? I don't know. But He's got something much more tangible. He's got like this little wall forming up here. Um, he wants to make this all nice and strong. So he's going after this group instead. If this gets strong, then forget the jump. Forget all that crap. We could just go out and flat out cap it if we get strong enough to do so. And that'd be awesome. I like that. I like that a lot. So we're going to Atari, he's going to connect, otherwise bad things happen to him. White gets to, yep, keep playing. Alright, that makes perfect sense. Black has to defend. White is still pursuing, because the Hane... Yeah, if he gets... Yeah, there's Aji there. Oh, is there Aji there? We have to go there and then down there. But then, if we have a stone place on the board, easier to look at. If we have a stone there, then what about here? That's in trouble. <laughs> oh my god, that group's actually in trouble. That's amazing. Black defends his middle group. 
Because, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's worried about the exact same thing. This group got stronger, so it can afford to be more aggressive against the top. Wow, did this game just turn around completely for white. Alright, so black says, please, dear god, respond to me. White says, okay, I will, by making my stone stronger. Okay. Black's trying to get out of there. White responds. Black descends. Trying to keep pressure on that top group. As long as he can attack that, then good to go. But white says, no, you didn't respond to me here. And he even prepared the follow-up because he strengthened these stones. He strengthened his cutting stones. The minute he did this, he was already aiming at that middle group. It helped attack the top, but it was also an attack against the side. Oh, that's freaking cool. We are digging that move. And white senses blood. And right away you can tell white's a younger player. You can so tell that White is a younger player. He's a young professional because of the aggression that he's showing. I mean, like, large frameworks, that's fine, I'll invade. We're getting an attack, that's cool, I'll just kill all the things. I don't care. Alright, so he cuts. And uh, now we find ourselves completely surrounded, but surely we can break out of this, right? Yeah, doop, 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 doop. And then that's cut off. Doop, 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 doop. Yeah, we can't, we can't hold that. We're just getting forcing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright. This won't die, but something's gonna give. He gets to take a stone. Can't save that one. We have to kill this. Kill and survive. We have no choice. Okay, yeah. I got it. Strengthen the stones. He's completely alive in the middle at this point. I mean, there's no way that's dying. So the attack on that so paid off. Force capture. Black says, I'm not going lightly. Takes. Alright, I guess we're going to get into a uh, potential co. Are we fighting this? We are fighting this. Wow. He pushes through. Black says, screw you. We're not doing that. Gets to connect instead. Alright. And now he's black's connected because this stone can't ever connect, right? It connects into an Atari and then we take. So he connected up in Sente at the cost of maybe these stones. Maybe those stones. So the question now is what do we have on the board that's large? We could connect. Oh, frack. Okay, yeah, we can connect. We can connect those stones. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I mean, it keeps this area nicely reduced. What else do we got? Middle is beyond us. Middle is so alive in, like, so many different ways. We're, we can't attack that anymore. That little guy over there is still alive. And we've got these three stones that we can attack. Attack those, most definitely. Take a page out of White's book and kill all the things. Alright, it's pretty severe, keep him out of the corner. White retakes the stone. 
Black says, there is no way on this planet that I'm fighting that co for my entire group. And White Prophets? Okay, interesting. Forget my three stones that are under attack. Let's take that huge corner for myself. Okay. He kind of had to, didn't he? All this time, I've been ignoring where White's points are coming from. I mean, I pointed out earlier how dismal White's position was looking because... This wasn't looking to be too large. That wasn't looking to be too large. Black had areas growing on multiple locations. And we were just trying to live. But now suddenly we have all of this, which is fairly, fairly, uh, fairly large, fairly large. Anchored all the way down to the corner. But this has to live in order for that to not to be bad. Okay, so white says, or black says, can I reduce this area? Because it's enormous. We don't know if we can kill a single group, but maybe we can live in the corner. Ooh, interesting. Very aggressive move. This says you can't live in the corner. I don't care what you play, I'm going to just, I'm going to attack you. I mean, I can threaten to go under your base from here. I can threaten to go under your base from here. There is no way this is coming out, or this is going to live with two eyes here. It might break out a bit, but this entire area, right, is all enclosed. So where are you breaking out to? You're breaking out to death. You're going to go and connect one dead stone up to, like, another dead stone. So Black says, kill all the things. Time to live again, because white's frustratingly good at that. Tari, okay, yeah, that's forcing move. Connecting that up makes sense, makes sense. All right, what do we do now? If we do that, it's probably going to be Ko, right? Um, if we connect, then we're just, I don't know, not very good at this game. Um, what do you do? Alright, Yohane. That makes sense. Making some shapes. Black gets to Hane as well. White goes back and takes that, sure. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. That's a spot unusual. What's going on there? Alright, so we can turn and then... And, uh, okay. So, we have to live still. Life achieved. Now what? Now black... Ooh, Black is going for so aggressive play. He's trying to kill. Oh, man. White bends and pokes. Okay. Um, push through again, yeah. Uh, we have to kill something in order to live. I guess we get to Atari, right? Yep, okay, we get to Atari. Alright, that's not quite the eye that we're looking for, sir. But we get to Atari again. We have one eye and Gote here, that's, that's something. Uh, if we push, that's an Atari, we have to take, he connects... We connect, he protects, we have one eye in Gote, and no forcing moves. That's a bummer. Um, 
goes after that other eye. Can get one sense hit and it's all good. Okay. Strengthens. Follows, okay. But if he responds here first, hmm. Huh. I think a lot of you are probably wondering the same thing I am. Okay, we can't do that. Do, 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 do. That is annoyingly more complicated than it looks like. But... That's forcing. Oh my Aji. So much Aji. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Do you see where this is going? We have to connect we have to protect the bottom, otherwise it's dead. But we can't Atari this up anymore. We, that was going to be our answer. But that Atari leads into an Atari. Right? Tree destroyed again. You connect first. Then protect. And then cut. Oh dear. Okay, so he moves to try to get another eye. White aggressively says no. Do we Atari it now? Okay. No, Atari's stupid. Because you Atari, then he Atari, then what? Then, then he just connects up and laughs at us because we have no eyes. So we go there. But he still does it. So we still have to connect. But if we connect, he's we're dead. So now we have to say, okay, we can't kill this. We need to freaking live. Alright, got it. Living. Living's good. Living's good. Uh, but White apparently does not want us living. He wants to kill us. Because he's aggressive. Okay. Um, yeah. Protect his eye, otherwise he can force, connect, Hane, connect, no eyes. Gives him the chance to go and protect. Oh, this is not looking good. can connect up, but what's the point when it doesn't do anything? Connects up. Pushing on out. Rut row. We need another eye. Actually, do we need one eye or two? Because it looks like we need two eyes. Because we can throw in and then Atari, and then he has to make an eye, and then we take, so it's like Ko for one eye right now. So he needs to make one eye in Sente, and then go back. If he makes one eye in Gote, then it's Ko for the other one. That's not happy. Comes out. Oh, pain. Everything's connected up. Yeah. There's no more. Black resigns the game. That was moderately impressive. Because we had a huge area for black. 
White invaded it. That invasion didn't quite go well. I mean, he got cut off, forced to live locally. And then had to salvage the situation in the middle, and he did so by threatening to make a large area for himself. And that was pretty nice. <coughs> on top, though, that attack just didn't go well. Because of that little point right there that he could push through. It was too much. This, along with these two stones that weren't connected. He just, there was not enough Aji to really try and keep this uh, group dead. Once again, White managed to live everywhere. Ay ay ay. Well, that was a very, very, very interesting game. Which we saw so much Aji being used. We saw it over on the right hand side. We saw it. All, we, uh, this, I don't care about what happened on the top. I That's just, you know, cool extra. This, I liked. How he uh, went up against this group to force himself to get nice shape in the middle to live in this huge area that he had. That that right there I liked. Th this lived is kind of interesting too. But in the grand scheme of things, I like this one more, I think. That one, that one was so important. Because if he just presses against this group, then the top never happens, ever. None of that has any chance of ever taking place. Because this group just gets stronger. And then, yeah. Not gonna happen. It's that he counterattacked this group in order to make this stronger. That that had to go back and live. Interesting. Very, very interesting game. Um, let's see. So this was game two in my How to Study Professional Game series. Uh, it occurred to me kind of like halfway through. It wasn't... In some ways, it's not as good as the first. I'm sorry about that. There were a lot of positions where I was answering the questions that uh, you're supposed to ask yourself. Where's the largest points? Where are the weak groups? Things like that. I was kind of giving the answers. I didn't stop and actually ask the question, so I'm sorry about that. I'll try and work on that for the next game. I guess there will be a next game, uh, most definitely. Um, probably take me a little while to find it. Uh, a lot of the games uh, tend to be like what I showed uh, back over in here, for example. These uh, ones that tend to be just really, really complicated with all, all of these... Uh, just uh, dogfighting from start to finish, and that's not the kind of game that we really want to go over. We're looking for more elementary and intermediate uh, professional games to study at the moment. And games like this most definitely are not it. So, when I find another great candidate, uh, and that I don't want to use my lectures, I will have another game. So you can look forward to that. I hope you guys all enjoy it. And I will see you all next time.